Hi everyone, this is the um, third page in the Chapter 6 test review for the Algebra 1B exam. I'm sorry, it's the third page in the Chapter 6 exam review for Algebra 1B, is what I meant to say. Um, and this page, if you look down the page, um, is all about solving, okay? Um, solving different types of quadratics. Now, there's sort of two different methods that we use for solving. Okay, there's the regular solving that we all know and love. So that would be like if I gave you 2x plus 1 equals 5. We all know how to solve that. We all know that we would subtract 1, we would divide by 2. That's what's called inverse operations. It's doing everything backwards. It's undoing things. So this is, I guess, what we would call like regular solving. Okay. Now, if I throw a square on there, if I make it 2x squared plus 1 equals 5, I can still use regular solving. I can subtract 1, I can divide by 2, and then my very last step would just be to take a square root to get rid of that square. Okay, so, so that's the inverse operations, that's one of the ways we can solve. However, when I throw something at you that has a square and oh, an x squared and an x in it, something like 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals some number, I don't know, 12. Um, I've got an x squared and an x that I don't have any way to combine and I don't have any way to get them by themselves. Um, and so this cannot be done with inverse operations. I can't add 2 and divide by 4 like it just... It, it's never going to get x alone to do that. So when I'm in this situation, I have to use the quadratic formula. So as we move down this page, some of the problems are going to require this, and some of the problems are going to require this. And so I want you to be paying attention at the differences between the two. So like looking at number 9, okay? Number 9 is pretty straightforward. Um, I can solve it just with inverse operations because I have an x squared, but I don't have an x. So... I can subtract 5 from each side, just like we always would. That leaves me with 3x squared equals 48. Now, I do get some people that want to take a square root right now. You're just a little impatient. Um, the problem is the square is only on the x. It's not on the 3. So we don't want the 3 to get a square root because the 3 is not being squared. So I have to get rid of the 3 before I can square root, meaning I need to divide. I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. I end up with x squared equals 16. And then take a square root. This is the hardest part about this process. And maybe not hard, it's not difficult, but it's difficult to remember. People screw this up a lot. When I take a square root, I'm going to get two different solutions. The square root of 16 could be 4, and it could be negative 4. So that means because the square root of x squared is x, x could equal 4, or x could equal negative 4. And the easier way to write this would be x equals plus or minus 4. Now you have to be careful, because just about every one of these, not all of them, but just about every one is going to come out with two solutions like this, but it's not always just plus and minus of the same number. Okay, sometimes it's two different numbers, so don't assume that they're always going to be pretty like that. Okay? Okay, the next one. Again, looking at it, should I use quadratic formula or should I use just regular solving? Well, it only has an x squared in it. Remember, if you have just an x or if you have just an x squared, you can solve it normally. It's only when you have both that we run into trouble. So again, I would probably minus 4, minus 4. That gives me negative 3x squared equals negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. x squared equals positive 1. And then take a square root on each side, and I am, end up with x equals plus or minus. Don't forget about the plus or minus 1. Because the square root of 1 is just 1. Okay, so I did take a square root there. I just... It's the same number. Okay, let's look at number 11. Number 11, again, I only see an x squared. Okay, no x. 
So I should be able to just undo things. I should just be able to work in reverse. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and x squared equals negative 25. Now I would take a square root. Um, I'm not sure what the square root of negative 25 is, so I'm going to try it in my calculator. Clear out whatever's there. I'm going to do the square root of negative 25 and hit enter. And I get this error, and it might be worded differently depending on the calculator you're using. This is normally the point where people come up to me and they say, oh my gosh, my calculator's messing up, there's a problem. There's no problem. Your calculator is telling you that there's an issue with what you typed into it. This right here is impossible. I can't take a square root of a negative number. Anytime you have a negative number sitting under a square root, this is no solution. Okay, so there is no solution to this equation. Okay, now number 12. Number 12 is an interesting one because there's actually two different ways to do this and you should get to the same answer either way. I'm going to show both methods. Um, you would only have to know one of them. The first one I'm going to show is the one that I think most people are going to go to instinctively um, because this is what I see even before you learn the quadratic formula some of you were trying to do this. Um, most people want to foil this. They want to say, oh I need to square this and I know how to do that. I know that I need to do 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5 plus 8 equals 17. I'm going to FOIL here, so let's see, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 plus I have a plus 8 at the end, and then that equals 17. Um, I'm going to combine the things that I can, which would be these and these. So now I have 4x squared minus 20x. Um, 25 and 8 is 33 equals 17. Now you'll notice that I'm looking at having an x squared and an x in this problem, so that means I am going to have to use the quadratic formula. Okay? Um, to use the quadratic formula, I need everything on one side of the equation and equal to zero on the other side. So if you're thinking about what we did up here, some of you may be drawn to try to get rid of that 33 because you're used to like back here, for example, we minus 5 right away. But remember, we're using a different method here. We're using the quadratic formula. I need to move this 17 this way. So I would subtract 17 subtract 17 okay and I end up with 4x squared minus 20x let's see 33 minus 17 wait, 23 I think that's 16 and then it equals 0 now this is ready for the quadratic formula okay so I'm gonna head over here here's my quadratic formula and again, you will have this formula on the exam. So for me, I would fill this in as x equals my b value. Remember, this is a, b, and c. And when I'm talking about a, b, and c, there are no x's. I'm not putting x's into my quadratic formula. It's just the numbers. My b is already negative. So out here where it says negative b, that's actually going to be a positive 20 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4 times 16. So that's 4 times a times c all over 2 times a or 2 times 4. Okay. The one thing I want to caution you about is from this point forward, it's really important that you stay organized in your process. Um, I see a lot of people who try to like skip steps and they, they just kind of scribble numbers off to the side here. They almost always get confused with that. Every time you do a step, rewrite the entire formula with whatever pieces are left of it. So I always start with this square root piece. 
I'm going to start with the square root of negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4 times 16. Let's see if I can. There we go. That way you can see. So I'm going to do the square root of, and in this calculator, this is different than a graphing calculator. I'm going to have to be really careful here. The negative 20 needs parentheses around it when I square it. But I don't want to use this parenthesis because this is the parenthesis I'm using to tell my calculator everything that needs to be in the square root. So I'm going to do parentheses again just around the negative 20 squared minus 4 times 4 times 16. And then I'm going to close that parenthesis from the beginning. Okay? So you have one set of parentheses around the negative 20, and then the whole thing is wrapped in parentheses to tell your calculator all of that belongs under the square root. I hit enter and I get 12 as my square root piece. Um, you may want to pause the video right now and try typing this into the calculator yourself just to make sure on whatever calculator you're using you know how to type this in. 12 is the correct answer there. So now my problem really says 20 plus or minus 12, and then I'm also going to do this 2 times 4. Okay, I can get that out of the way, so that's 8. Okay. Now, from the plus or minus, and notice I didn't take this and divide by 8. I get a lot of people wanting to do that too. They say, okay, I know this is an 8 here, so I can divide these. You've got to deal with this addition and subtraction before you can divide by this number on the bottom. The division is like your very last thing that you do. So from here, and usually I do this sideways, but I'm a little bit out of space. I'm going to split into two different problems. I'm going to do 20 plus 12 over 8. And I'm also going to do 20 minus 12 over 8. Well, let's see, 20 plus 12 is 32, and 32 over 8 is 4. So this would be x equals 4. Or... 20 minus 12 is 8, and 8 over 8 is 1, so x equals 1. So these would be your two solutions. Okay, so instead of getting a plus or minus answer like we did up here, we get our two different solutions. Your plus or minus is kind of buried here in the problem. Um, now, the thing that you need to look out for in this last step, I did those in my head. You heard me do those. I said 20 plus 12 is 32, 32 divided by 8 is 4. If those are nice, pretty numbers, I suggest you use your brain, okay, because your brain's going to be smarter than your calculator. If you do have to type it into your calculator, okay, make sure that you put the top of that fraction in parentheses, because otherwise your calculator is going to do the wrong order of operations. I take that back. Your calculator's not doing it wrong. You're telling your calculator the wrong thing to do. So I would do 20 plus 12 in parentheses divided by the 8. That's your way of telling the calculator, hey, both of these things are up on top of that fraction. Okay, and then hit your enter. And then same thing if you want to do the minus 12. Okay, I actually want to show a different method of doing that number 12. Because we talked about another way to do those kinds of problems way back at the beginning. Now we know the quadratic formula, so doing it this way is perfectly valid. But I actually think the other way takes fewer steps. It's just not what you're used to seeing. So... I'm going to take that same problem. I'm just going to cover this up here. I'm going to cover almost all of it up. I'll get rid of this junk. Close enough. Um, I'm going to take that same problem, the 2x minus 5 squared plus 8 equals 17. And I'm not going to foil it because I'm trying to undo everything. So... I don't want to square it because that just makes things bigger and messier. I want to unsquare. I want to get rid of stuff. So I'm going to solve this one with inverse operations. Okay, because right now all I see is a square. I don't see an x and an x squared. I just see a square. So I'm going to minus 8, minus 8. So now I have 2x minus 5 squared equals 9. Now, at this point, I can't do anything inside the parentheses until I get rid of the square. So I'm going to take a square root, because that's how we would get rid of the square. Okay? And remember, the square root of 9 has two possible answers. It could be positive 3, and it could be negative 3. Okay? It could be either one. 
what's going to come down over here on the left, your square and your square root cancel, and I have 2x minus 5. So this equation is going to say 2x minus 5 equals 3, and 2x minus 5 equals negative 3. Okay? Now, I have to solve these separately. Okay, I can't just solve one and then say, oh, it's plus or minus that answer. I have to solve them separately. So I would add 5 and add 5. So I get 2x equals 8. And then divide by 2, divide by 2. And I get x equals 4. Over here, if I add 5 and add 5, I get 2x equals 2. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 1. Notice those are the same two solutions we got before. Okay, Same two solutions I got over here. x equals 4, x equals 1. Just working it in a different way. So when you have these ones like this with the parentheses squared, um, you can FOIL it. it. That would just put you in a position where you have to use quadratic formula. Or you can take a square root. Just when you take a square root, remember that gives you two totally separate problems with two totally separate answers to solve. Um, back when we did this, when we first did this lesson on solving with square roots, you had not learned about quadratic formula yet. And so when we did these problems, I was telling you, do not FOIL. Okay, on that quiz even, I, I said over and over again, please do not FOIL them when they say solve. Okay, that's why. It's because I wanted you to do it this way. But now that you know the quadratic formula, you could do it by foiling. I think it just takes a little more time. Okay, so it's totally up to you. Either method's totally valid. Okay, let's look at 13. Solve 2x squared minus 2x minus 12 equals 0. And this one's pretty straightforward. I have an x squared and an x, so I'm going to have to use quadratic formula. Okay, um... It's already equal to 0, which is what I need it to be in to do the quadratic formula. So my formula is up here. Let's see. If I can bring that down some. Um, formula is up here just so I don't have to keep rewriting it. So I would say x equals, again, negative b would be a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times negative, I'm sorry, 4 times a times c, all over 2 times 2, okay, because that's my a value. I'm going to start with the square root piece. So let's see, that's going to give me, and remember, negative 2 gets its own little set of parentheses minus 4 times 2 times negative 12. And I get 10 as my square root there. Okay. Um, so now this problem says 2, and this is what I mean by rewriting the whole thing. Don't try to just like, oh, this is 10. Okay, I wouldn't do that because then you get confused about what you've done and what you haven't. Rewrite what it looks like now that you have the 10. So I have 2 plus or minus 10 over 4, because I did go ahead and do the 2 times 2. But again, notice I didn't do 10 divided by 4. From here, I split, and I do 2 plus 10 over 4, and 2 minus 10 over 4. Remember, these ones are probably your brain is smarter than your calculator. 2 plus 10 is 12, and 12 over 4 is 3. And 2 minus 10 is negative 8, and negative 8 over 4 is negative 2. So your two solutions here are 3 or negative 2. Okay, pretty straightforward quadratic formula there. And then number 14. Again, in number 14, I see that I have an x squared and an x, so that's my hint that I need the quadratic formula. Now, unlike this one, this one's not set equal to 0. I need it equal to 0 before I can start. So I would probably add 21 to each side. Now over here on the left, I'm not actually adding 21 to anything. I'm just writing it as 3x squared plus 5x plus 21 equals 0. Now I'm going to go with my quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so that would be negative 5 
plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times my a value, which is 3. Okay, I'm going to start with the square root piece. So what I'm going to do is a square root, nope, square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 21. Hmm, that's strange. Again, this would be the time that most people come panicking to me and telling me that their calculator is screwing up or something's wrong with my calculator. Okay, that's not that something's wrong with your calculator. What I, would, what I always do at this point when I get this error is I look inside that square root. And remember, this is called the discriminant. Okay, and notice that in all the other ones, I didn't really care what the discriminant was because I had to find the root, so I just did the whole problem. But I'm going to look at just the discriminant this time. So I'm going to look at just 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 21. And I end up with negative 227. Well, think about what the problem is there. Essentially, here you are asking your calculator to take a square root of negative 227. And that's not possible. Just like up here in number 11, taking a square root of negative 25 was not possible. Okay, here this is not possible either. So as soon as I hit that step where I see that I have a negative discriminant, I can say no solution. Okay, so that one wasn't too bad after all. Okay, we'll pick up in the next video with, uh, I guess we'll be starting with number 15.